the future. What is a future? Do I have a future? Uh, if you were without a budget in 2017, but thirsted to get into PC gaming, you did have some options, especially last gen or used. A lot of people opted for the i3 of the day, a two core, four thread part. And then before eighth gen, where i3s became four core without hyper threading. And these days they are now what the i7s used to be, four core, eight thread. Intel's sixth gen Skylake lineup had the i3-6100, a 3.7 gigahertz, two core, four thread part for just over $100. And while single threaded performance was good, there wasn't a lot of multitasking to go around. Seventh gen KB Lake was just around the corner and one of the more interesting CPUs in that lineup was the new Pentium, the G4560. For those who don't remember, this was a game changer. Previously, Pentiums had been two cores without hyper threading, but this, added hyperthreading, making it essentially just the last gen i3. For like $65, half the price. I never owned one of these chips until recently. I bought a sealed G4560 and I've been waiting for an excuse to open her up. Now we just need a GPU. The new entry level GPU on the block in 2017 was the GT1030. Lacking the X prefix suggests that it's not a gaming class card, but that's never stopped anyone before. For just under $100, you got two gigs of GDDR5 memory, which these days is just not cutting it. There's also a DDR4 version that launched a year later, but it's severely crippled. So if you're looking to buy a GT1030 for whatever reason, just make sure it has GDDR5 memory. The only other notable spec of this itty bitty card is its 30 watt TDP. So if you're thermally or power restricted, this could suffice. I made a video about this card when it was released, and you can check that out there. And while it wasn't good enough for AAA games, it was actually very impressive for lighter titles. This card is often compared to the graphics performance of the Nintendo Switch, though they are different. So for $150, you had a CPU and a GPU. All you need the case, which is negligible, just use a box. A cooler, well in our case, the stock cooler, so no cost. A power supply, though you wouldn't need a very beefy one, drawing only about 100 watts. Now all you need is RAM, motherboard, and storage. Back then, DDR4 was expensive for some reason, so you'd probably settle for 8 gigs of RAM. Here I'm using 16 gigs of 2400 megahertz, or mega transfer, I don't give a f hey! But in my tests, you probably won't be using more than 8 gigs. You could have gotten away with a very entry-level motherboard like an H110 chipset, though you could have gone as high as a Z270, though that wouldn't be necessary unless you needed some particular features or had a solid idea of, of upgrade path in the future. Though upgrading the system is an idea we can explore in the future, so leave a like if you want to see that. Lastly, for storage, while SSDs were common, you'd have to decide if 128 gigs would be enough, or if a terabyte of spinning molasses would be preferable for storing all the games you'd definitely be playing. I'm not gonna unalive responsiveness with a hard drive, so I'm doing an SSD here. This was a very entry-level system seven years ago, but how will it stack up considering that you could have gotten a high-end system seven years ago and it would still kind of be lacking these days? This video is about this system. In the future, we could look at other years and tiers of hardware and compare them, but this is a good starting point. Now in some modern games, like Lethal Company, it's not incredibly demanding, though it does say minimum requirements is a GTX 1050. Looks like just over four gigs of memory being used. Not really an issue here, but you could get away with eight gigs on this system. And we are seeing the GPUs being used more than the CPU, which is interesting. This Pentium has a little bit left in her. And frame rate wise, we are under 60, though minimums are about 30. So between 60 and 30, that's not too awfully bad, especially for this system being bad. So for Lethal Company, I'd say this is completely playable. Now that may change depending on the moon you're on or how many people you're playing with. But again, that GPU seems to be holding this back just a little bit. But at least on a seven year old entry level system, you could still be a great asset to the company. Valheim on Vulcan, 900p and lowest settings. It is playable. RAM utilization is just above six gigs of RAM, so still eight gigs might be enough here. But again, and even more so in this title than Lethal Company, GPU utilization, 100%, or 99, you know, close enough. And the CPU, 40, 50? Hey, 
there's a little bit left in that Pentium that the GT1030 just isn't catching up. So again, that was on Vulcan between 30 and 60 FPS. And on DirectX 11, very similar story. Maybe slightly less RAM being used. Utilization is a little bit higher on the processor, it seems. And we're getting worse lows in terms of frame rate. So maybe Vulcan's the way to go here. Uh, either way, they perform the same. It's playable, woo, but like, you're gonna want a little more. But seven years, it's been seven years, low in system, doing all right. Now, Phasmophobia, a ghost hunting indie game. 900p, lowest settings, yet again, we could probably get away with medium here because we're looking at over 100 FPS, though there are, you know, some dips and stutters just depending on what you're doing. Ooh, especially when loading the map, jeez. So lows can be pretty brutal. S seven gigs of RAM. Okay, we're getting close there, and I have seen this game use 16 gigs of RAM depending on the map and settings. Like, jeez. This game is a lot closer in terms of utilization. GPU still seems to be mo mostly pinned at 80-90%, but it is more even now between that and the Pentium. Pentium is about 70% utilized, so there is just a little bit left in that. Maybe a better GPU could let it stretch its legs a little more, but we're out. 200 FPS. I think we're doing fine. Again, we could probably go to medium settings and we could still hunt ghosts very smoothly. Pal World 900p, lowest settings. We're getting pretty bad frame rates here. It's actually fairly close to what you'd get on the Steam Deck, though this is running at a higher resolution than the Steam Deck would be, uh, being about 800p. GPU utilization 100%, CPU about 50 again. It's not really my game, but like, it's playable. Overwatch 2, lowest settings, 900p. Just like all the other games so far. Now this game is a little different. The outlier in the test, if you will, because in this, the CPU is pegged and the GPU still has, well, it's at 25%, 30% right here. Frame rate and frame times, not what you want to see. 30 and below, oh no. I'm pretty sure back in the day, this could handle Overwatch. Maybe it was Overwatch 2 that killed this, or maybe I'm mistaken and you just need a better processor here. But that's a fix we could do in a later video. That's bad. You see that? The worst test so far. Not acceptable for an eSport. Hell no. But, but we're still using under eight gigs of RAM. 30 FPS with dips down to five on the frame times. Ooh. Ooh. No. Oh, and sorry, I wasn't paying attention to VRAM utilization this whole time. So out of the two gigs of GDDR5 you get on the GT1030, um, PAL World was hitting that cap, as well as Lethal Company was like 1945 megabytes or something of that memory. So with those two games especially, you're on the edge of, if it needs any more, you're just gonna cripple. So um, two gig not enough, or do we need more comprehensive video in the future about two gig memory? Maybe still playable. I don't know. It's not, but like we can still play with it. Counter-Strike 2, low settings with performance on the FX Fidelity Super Resolution, we're getting anywhere between 50 and 80 FPS. That ain't too bad. I mean, it's pretty bad for Counter-Strike, but like on this hardware, I mean, I would expect it a little less. I mean, as per usual, I could get like second place on a death match, but really not what you want to be doing. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this with the competitive. I wouldn't want it to drop my ELO like this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but also, MSI Afterburner Reba Tuner statistics software uh, doesn't run within Counter-Strike or without you going untrusted. So I had to wait until the game was done to alt-tab into MSI Afterburner to like see the, like my, my, my utilizations. And uh, here, let me take a look real quick. Huh, that's weird. So under two gigs of the VRAM and CPU and GPU utilization is about both 50%. So could be like an optimization error. I doubt we could really get that much more performance out of this. Uh, Counter-Strike and Overwatch 2, not really games you want to play. This isn't an eSport budget system anymore. So while these results aren't necessarily exciting, it's impressive given the fact that this was a budget entry-level system seven years ago. 
Today, a $300 budget system looks like this, and we can only postulate if this will be usable in seven years. Who knows? In those last seven years, since 2017, a lot has changed, and it would be very interesting to see how a higher-end system or an upgraded system, maybe what you would have done to this system if you bought this system back then and upgraded it over time, how would it perform today? Or which upgrade should you have made? I mean, given the fact that the 1030 seemed to be the struggle bus here, maybe a better GPU immediately would have let the Pentium stretch its legs a bit more. Maybe that better CPU, especially an Overwatch, would have given us a lot more performance. We just, I don't know. You have to wait to find out. So leave your thoughts on this below and we will check that out in the future. Uh, but for now, I don't know, maybe we can just hang out for a little bit. I'm waiting for you to comment something and, and the like and subscribe if you're not. I mean, you don't have to. You could also double subscribe that little, the, the thingy, the bell, the ring. I got all day. I can just keep doing this. It's actually night. It's like, it's like 9 p.m. Oh yeah, 9 p.m. Oh, by the way, this is my little pine time. Uh, $35 smartwatch. It's pretty cool. It's not that smart, but like, it's pretty cool. Never owned a watch before. I'll do a bit on that eventually. It might be like a short. I don't know. Oh yeah, and for you, those of you who are around still, ow. I got one last trick up my sleeve. For you special viewers that stuck around to the very end, this is a sealed i3-7350K. We could put this in the system too. Okay, now bye. I've shown, I've done too much. Okay, I'm sorry. Ah.